How do I create a local user account? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. I actually ran into this situation not long ago and decided that it would be very instructive to show you how to create a local user account on Windows. Microsoft kind of sort of goes out of their way to make it difficult uh, or at least make it not obvious how to do this. If you're logging in with your Microsoft account, that's fine. This isn't necessarily a replacement for that. The best use case scenario for most folks is to have a backup way of logging into their machine if for some reason their Microsoft account becomes unable to do so. What we're going to do is create a local account on the machine and then change that to be administrator capable so that if you ever need it, you can log in. Let's switch over now to Windows 10. So what I'm going to do is just search for um, user accounts. And there's a bunch of different settings here, different options you can do. What we're looking for here is add, edit, or remove other users. Depending on uh, what you find in your search results, it can be a little different, but this is the interface we want to start with. These are other users. These are unrelated to your family. This is unrelated to your, your Microsoft account. We're going to add someone else to this PC. Now, the issue here is that it wants a Microsoft account. It really does. But we don't have this person's sign-in information because there is no account. There is no sign-in information. And once again, it wants, it really wants to push a Microsoft account, which we're not going to do. The trick here is this add a user without a Microsoft account. That's what causes a local account to be created. Now I'm going to give this local account uh, my usual uh, local account name. Uh, I'm going to give it a password that I use a fair amount for this kind of stuff. And this does require that we set up some security questions. I'm going to skip over that here in the video because there's no need for you to see my questions and answers. Uh, but this is a requirement. There is no way to bypass this in the real world. So I do suggest you set this kind of stuff up. Okay, after hitting OK, after creating those security questions, we now have a local account that I could, if I wanted to, sign into the machine with. I'm now going to click on it and change the account type. I'm going to change it from standard user to administrator. We'll hit OK. And now we have this other account on our system with login credentials that don't rely on any Microsoft account. The way to test that, of course, is to sign out. And then you'll see that we have down here a new account listed on the login screen that we can select instead. I'm going to click on that, type in that account's password. And since this is the first time logging in with that account, we end up with the old uh, out of box experience or OOBE as they sometimes call it. Essentially what's happening right now is it's setting up the documents and videos and pictures and standard folders and a bunch of information in the registry for this specific account. Now that it's been logged into, there's a bunch of settings we can select. Again, these as always are up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and accept the defaults here. And there we are. We've got a clean, fresh user on my uh, Windows machine, on my Windows 10 machine. What I am going to do also is, since I like a clean desktop, is to remove the shortcuts. We'll just make those go away in the recycle bin because, of course, the applications are still here in the start menu. The start menu is a default start menu. Again, set up for a brand new account. The taskbar has the defaults set on it. And there you go. You've got a different non-Microsoft login account for this machine. I'm now going to go ahead and go back to my primary use account. Right click, sign out. I'll go ahead and go back to the account that I had been using, which uses a pin to sign in. And we're back. Now, I do want to caution you that it may seem like a useful thing to actually use this other account for certain things. Do so if you are comfortable doing so. 
Do realize, however, that it can suddenly get very confusing when you have documents or if you install software that suddenly is only available or doesn't seem to be available while you're logged in. It's very common for people to do things in one account that they don't realize won't show up in the other. So my suggestion is, my recommendation is that you pick one account to do most of your work under. In this case, I'm choosing to do that with my Microsoft account. That other account that I've created is a backup account. It will do a couple of other things that we'll talk about in future videos, but it is just a backup account and another way for me to sign into my machine should I ever not want to or be unable to sign in using the Microsoft account. Hope that's helpful. For updates, for comments, for related links and more, visit askleo.com slash 143029. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is AskLeo.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.